Is the Antichrist an end-time dictator who has yet to appear? You know, I remember reading Hal Lindsey's The Late Great Planet Earth. When I was a freshman at Texas A&M University, it was my first foray into the world of biblical eschatology. What would happen in the end times, that is. But more importantly, this book introduced me to a very scary person called the Antichrist. Lindsay painted this vivid picture of a single satanic ruler who would rise to power in the last days. In a time of geopolitical chaos, this international influential leader would promote himself as the savior to the world. He would make a covenant with Israel only to break it and then unleash all hell on earth. This Antichrist would kill Christians and Jews and enslave anyone who did not have the mark of the beast, 666. And Lindsay made it very clear, at least to me, that at that time in my life, that all this scary stuff regarding the Antichrist, well, all of it was foretold in the Bible. Hey, listen, before I go any further, though, let me know what you believe about the Antichrist. Put it in the comments section below. What is your understanding of this end-time figure, the Antichrist? All right, let's get back to my story. For years, I just accepted what was said about this dark leader, the Antichrist, who would rise to power in the last days. Now, to be honest, it was unsettling to think about this dark figure who would bring so much harm to the world. But on the other hand, it was also encouraging because when he would rise to power, that meant Jesus was coming back soon. Well, I need to say that my view of the Antichrist took a dramatic turn when I did one simple thing. I did a word study of the word Antichrist. It's the Greek word Antichristos. And I discovered something that was very eye-opening. I found that this word Antichrist is only used five times in a total of four verses in the Bible. And then what was even more amazing, those four verses about the Antichrist are using the word Antichrist. They are all found in the first and second letters of John. Well, that surprised me because with all this talk of the Antichrist, this powerful leader, this powerful figure that would rise in the end, it would at least occur to me that most of the biblical writers would say something about the Antichrist and use that word. Surely they would mention him. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, no, not one mention of the word Antichrist. Well, surely Paul would have something to say. But again, the answer is no. Paul never uses the word Antichrist. And here's something that's very revealing. John, who authored the book of Revelation, never once uses the word Antichrist in this book to describe or even name any of the characters that you read about. You would think, surely in Revelation, I mean, this is the book about end times, surely there would be a mention of the Antichrist. Nope, not one. And then let me add just one more thing that I uncovered, and it was this. John's use of this word antichrist in his first two letters never refers to an individual. The word antichrist, as used by John, is used as a descriptive term for a group or a type of person, but it's never used as a title for the antichrist, for a single individual who, to, who will rise to power in the last days. Well, I must say, all of this took me back. So what I thought I would do with you today is let's take a look at these four verses in John's first two letters and just see what he has to say and how he uses this word antichristos or antichrist. And let's begin with 1 John 2, 18, because this is the first reference. Children, 
It is the last hour, and as you've heard that Antichrist is coming, and so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it's the last hour. Take a moment and just look at this particular verse. Note that John is not talking about one Antichrist, but he's talking about many Antichrists who came and went during the time in which John was writing. And note also that these multiple Antichrists are the proof that John and his audience were living in the, quote, last hour. Now, unless that last hour has lasted for nearly 2,000 years, I think we can safely say that this last hour, or end time, if you will, pertains to John's era, not ours. And then again, keep in mind, this last hour, which pertains to John era, John's era, that is, not ours, is probably a reference to the fact that John and his original readers were living in the last days of the Old Covenant. The last hour for the Old Covenant was coming to an end. Please note, in this verse, Antichrist is not a single person, but it's a descriptive term for a group or type of person not a title for a special single person. Note, if you will, the definite article is not used. It does not read, you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. You read, you have heard that Antichrist is coming. It is a general term. Well, I must say, when I looked at that, some wheels began to turn in my head thinking, okay, what's going on here? Well, let's continue on. Let's take a look at the second reference, and that's in 1 John 2, 22. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. So look at this verse. John is asking who the liar is. And he says, the liar is anyone who denies Jesus as the Christ, that is, the Messiah. So Antichrist is defined as anyone who denies Jesus is the Christ or Messiah, that is, Jesus as Messiah did not come in the flesh. What John is doing here, as you read this verse, he's creating a test case for determining between the one who tells the truth and the one who lies. And the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ, John tells us, this one is the liar. That individual or group of individuals, they are the ones who are antichrist. They are lying about Jesus. Well, again, now that we've looked at two verses, I must say my understanding is beginning to widen and I'm beginning to question some things. But let's read on. Let's look at the third reference, 1 John 4. By this you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Again, looking at this verse, Antichrist is defined as anyone who denies Jesus is the Christ and did not come in the flesh. Please also note that these Antichrists, they are alive. That is, they are living during the time of John. They are present in John's world. And please also note, John makes no reference to a future Antichrist. That is, someone who would arise later in the distant future. It's simply not there. John is telling us that these antichrists, those who deny that Jesus is the Messiah, they are now in the world already. Well, a case is definitely being built and we're seeing some things, but we've got one more reference to look at and that is in John's second letter, that is 2 John 7. Let's look at it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. So again, what John is doing, what he's already done, he's defined antichrist as anyone who denies Jesus is the Christ. 
and did not come in the flesh. And again, he's letting us know that these antichrists are alive and they're deceiving others during the time of John. So, Let's summarize what we've discovered up to this point. And there are four things, four things that are very clear from these four verses. And these are the only four verses, if you will, that use the word antichrist. And it's only used five times in those four verses. And here's what we learn. There were many antichrists. That's number one. Number two, these antichrists appear in John's time. Number three, these antichrists deny Jesus was the Christ. And finally, the appearance of these antichrists was proof that John's generation was the last hour or the end time. And again, keeping in mind, the last hour is probably John's way of informing his readers that they were living in the last days of the old covenant because the new covenant in Jesus through his death and resurrection had come and the old, it was going away. Now, outside of these five uses of Antichrist in John's first and second letters, that word, Antichrist, appears nowhere else in the Bible. Let that sink in for a moment. Nowhere else do you find the word Antichrist in Scripture. It does not appear in Revelation where you would expect it to be if it were describing a single world ruler who would arise in the end times. But the book of Revelation does not even use the word Antichrist. The simple teaching of the Bible on Antichrist grows out of five appearances of this word Antichrist in four verses. That's it. And what those verses teach us is that there were many antichrists and they appeared in the time that John lived and their appearance was confirming that John's generation was the last hour or the end time. Yet the claim that I was taught and probably you as well is that the antichrist was a title for this single satanic ruler who would arise in the end, that is the very end of everything, and would rule the world. This very influential ruler would rise up. He would make a covenant with Israel only to break it. Church is gone because you're taught that it's been raptured out. So this Antichrist would then erect a statue of himself within the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. He would proclaim himself God, and he would give everyone the mark of the beast, 666. He would then lead the world to invade Israel in this final battle, Armageddon. And at the moment of climax, Jesus would return at Armageddon, defeat the Antichrist, and establish a thousand year reign on the earth. But there's one problem as I see it. Where do these teachers and preachers get this idea that the Antichrist is a single person who is yet future when the biblical texts say no such thing. Where do they come up with this idea of the Antichrist being a single person who deceives the world and attempts to destroy Israel in the future? John does not say that the Antichrist is a single person as we've already seen. John is not talking about some future leader with this title, Antichrist, who would arise in the distant future. Yet countless teachers and preachers talk about this scary figure who will show up 2,000 years plus from the time of John and do all of what I've been talking about. How do they square this idea with what is plainly taught in John's first two letters? Let me share with you how they do this. These teachers and teachers get around the obvious truth taught in John's letter. They make a distinction, and this is important. They make a distinction between what John was saying to his readers in the first century and to those of us who are living now in the 21st century. And the way they do that is they accomplish this with what they call the lowercase a and uppercase a antichrist, if you will. Let me, let me explain what I mean. They point out that John's use of the word antichrist is simply 
a general term that speaks of anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ, as we've seen, and that's clearly what John is saying. This, they say, is Antichrist with a lower case A, the lesser Antichrist. They then point out that biblical prophecy, on the other hand, speaks of a specific end-time figure who will fulfill the title of Antichrist like no other. This is the Antichrist with a capital A, what they call the ultimate Antichrist. So, you have this clear teaching in John regarding the Antichrist, what prophecy teachers will call the lesser Antichrist. You then have what these guys call the ultimate Antichrist with a capital A. But when you look at it, you start to realize that what they're doing here is creating an artificial character that they're reading back into the biblical text. To me, again, to me, I'd like to hear from you, but to me, based on my understanding of what the Bible clearly states, this take on the Antichrist results from a doctrinal assumption that is more fiction than it is fact. When you're reading some kind of a character that the Bible does not speak of and reading it back into Scripture, something is amiss. And one thing that I try to be committed to as best that I know how is to let the biblical text just say what the biblical text says and not try to read anything back into it. Now, again, all of this is my opinion based on what I believe the Bible is saying. But the Antichrist of these teachers, when I hear them teaching, appears to be, and again, hear me, this is my opinion, but it appears to be an imaginary construct that is utterly dependent on their system of end time scenarios, or if you will, their eschatology. Again, tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your comments because this is a very wide open topic. So back to what we're talking about here. Instead of letting the Bible define Antichrist, what these teachers have done is they've developed an eschatology, a vivid end time context. And then they force the biblical text, that is John's four verses about Antichrist, into their eschatology to create, if you will, the capital A, Antichrist, the ultimate Antichrist. For instance, They'll go to Daniel 8, where it talks about this fierce king. Now, understood in their theological context, this king is proof of the Antichrist, the capital A Antichrist, who will arise in the last days and attack God's people as a final act of rebellion. But bear in mind that Daniel never uses a word Antichrist. And by the way, this fierce king can be understood in other ways. For instance, I believe this fierce king can be better understood historically as the blasphemous house of Herod that appears in different faces throughout the Gospels and the book of Acts. Or another example, take the beast in Revelation 13. This is often depicted as the Antichrist, this fierce creature that arises. But which beast? Because the book of Revelation talks about two beasts, one that is on the land and one that is in the sea. So which beast are we talking about? Now, not to get into the weeds of Revelation, but the beast described by John can better be described, again, by my opinion, what I believe and what I'm seeing as a historical king and kingdom that occurred in the first century. And a good candidate for that king and kingdom is Nero, the Roman Caesar. And again, remember, John who wrote Revelation never used the word Antichrist in that book. I mean, we, we could go on. There's the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians 2. But again, Paul does not call this man of lawlessness the Antichrist. In fact, Paul never uses the word Antichrist in any of his New Testament writings. Then you have the abomination of desolation that's spoken about in Daniel as well as in Matthew. But once again, this word Antichrist is not used in connection with that phrase. 
Neither Daniel nor Matthew ever use the word Antichrist. Again, I'm just pointing things out for you to begin to think, what is the Bible saying? Now listen, I could go on, but I think you're getting the picture. Again, tell me what you think. What is your understanding? Put it in the comments below. So let me remind you now of what we've learned from the four verses in John's letter that uses the word Antichrist. Antichrist is not a single person, but rather John uses this term as a descriptive word for a group or type of person, not a title for a single person who would arise in the distant future. Antichrist, defined by John, is anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah and did not come in the flesh. John also writes that these antichrists, they came and they went during the time that John wrote, not sometime in the distant future. And John interprets the manifestation of these antichrists as proof that he and his audience, that is his readers, were living in the last hour or the end time that pertained to John's era, not ours. They were living in the last days of the old covenant, if you will. This is what I believe John is saying. So to conclude, based on the four verses that mention Antichrist, and John is the one that does this in his first and second letters, I believe that it's purely a logical fallacy to ask the question, who is the Antichrist? This is the $64 $64 million question that's thrown about all the time, who is the Antichrist? But the reason for this conclusion, why I say this is a logical fallacy, is that Scripture does not speak of Antichrist as a single person who would arise in the last days before Jesus returns. It's just not there. Based on what we know from the Bible, I believe it's far more logical to ask this question. What is Antichrist? And my friends, John has answered that question for us in his first two letters. He's told us what Antichrist is. Hey, listen, I do hope this has been helpful. Again, if you've got some comments or some thoughts about Antichrist, let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, let me encourage you to do so. As I've shared many times, I post a video every week and my intent and desire is to simply look at the Bible and see what it says so that we together can grow in our understanding of what God is saying to us through his word, the Bible. By the way, if this video has also been helpful, take a moment also to hit that like button. Thank you so much for being a part and as always, God's very best to you.